Hello Year 3 for Science. Today we're going to continue on with Unit 6, Measuring Forces. We can also use a force meter to measure the force needed to start moving objects horizontally. We choose which surface we want to measure, hook the object onto the force meter, pull the object, the spring will stretch, and then we read how many newtons are needed to change the position of the object. Different amounts of force are needed to move an object on different surfaces. We can see in this video that they have a block of wood. It has a smooth plastic surface on it. They move the block across the surface and take a reading. Now they have added sandpaper to the same block. They use the same block so they can measure force on an item with the same mass to get a fair reading. The sandpaper has a rough surface, here they're measuring it, and we can see they've taken a new reading. We can see that when the smooth surface object, the block with the plastic, is moved, it needs less force than the rough surface object, the block with the sandpaper. We can also state the opposite. When the rough surface object is moved, it needs more force than the smooth surface object. Different surfaces acting against each other means either a less or greater force is needed to move the object. Let's have a look at this example. This guy is trying to move his boat across the sand. He's pulling and he's pulling, but it's too hard. Oh, and all of a sudden, the surface has changed. Now, what's going to happen? If he tries to pull it, will it move easily? Yes, it does. So... The question is, why? It's because of something called friction. Friction is the force which opposes the motion of an object. It always acts in the opposite direction of motion. The amount of friction depends on the texture of the object and the surface on which it's being moved. Here we have another example of a aeroplane. Now, the airplane on the rough surface has a greater friction than on the smooth surface. So, why was it so difficult for the boat to be pulled across the sand? The bottom of the boat is a smooth surface, but all those little sand particles, they're actually rough surfaces. So, if you think about it in a bigger way, all these sand particles create a greater friction. But then when we move over to water, the liquid is actually a smooth surface. So acting with the smooth surface of the boat, it makes it easier to pull. Friction acts in the opposite direction of movement. If you have a push force, friction acts in the opposite. And if you have a pull force, friction will also act in the opposite of that pull. Now it's your turn to test out friction of surfaces. Get a shoe and a book. We will try to pull the objects across different surfaces to see which might need the greatest force to change its position. First, pull the objects across a smooth surface, such as a ceramic floor or a smooth table. Next, pull the same objects across a rough surface, such as a carpet or on your bed sheets. Was it easier or harder to pull the book across the rough or smooth surface. What about the shoe compared to the book on the surfaces? Which did you find the most difficult to move? Which had the most friction? On Pupils Book, page 136, we can use a force meter to measure the force needed to make a block start moving. The question for today is, what will happen to the reading on the force meter if we place something heavy on the block? Please explain why this will happen and submit via email. Let's review. We can measure forces using a force meter. We can vertically measure the force of gravity on an object. The direction of gravity is towards the center of Earth. More gravitational force is applied when an object's mass is larger. We can also horizontally measure the force needed to start an object moving. Friction acts in the opposite direction of movement. Friction increases on rough surfaces and decreases on smooth surfaces. 